Corbin came to me with complaints of low back pain at the very bottom of his squat associated with butt wink. Now butt wink defines a small turn under of the pelvis at the very bottom of the squat that creates a stress concentration of flexion movement at the lower joints of the lumbar spine. Today I'm going to take you behind the scenes of the evaluation I did with Corbin and some of the exercises I incorporated into his treatment plan. Now most injuries that occur in the weight room are due to problems in the way we are moving and or inappropriate training weights that create small amounts of micro trauma on parts of the low back and eventually culminate in injury over time. As you watch the evaluation today, see if you can figure out which of the following movement diagnoses fit his pain the best. I started our evaluation just by looking at his squat and he told me his pain came out only at the very bottom of the movement. When I did some load testing by having him hold a weight out in front of him for a few seconds, he had no pain, and he had no pain with a heel drop test for dynamic load testing, meaning his symptoms were likely not fitting within a load intolerance category. During a seated compression test, he had no pain when pulling up on a chair if in a neutral spinal posture, and no pain when creating compression with an extended spinal position. Now listen into what he felt when he did flexion. Okay. Yep. Now round your spine. Okay, pull up from that. Yep, that hurts already. You already just being in that position. Yep. Therefore, we found another clue that he may be dealing with a flexion intolerance as just moving into a rounded position reproduced his symptoms. When performing an RDL, he noted a small amount of pain about halfway down. Okay, so here's your cues. I want you to basically, and I'm gonna push my fingers into your sides right here. You're gonna brace by pushing your core out, and you're gonna hold that brace the entire time. So push my fingers away. Push, 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 you more, you more, you more. So it's tough for you to contract going out. Mm -hmm. So relax that core, okay? Like push away. So your cue is fill the tank. So from right here, see if I put my fingers in here? See how much movement I have? Mm -hmm. So from right here, push my thumbs away. There you go. Hold that, now go. Back up. Does that change anything? Uh, one is probably zero. I one. didn't really feel that. You didn't feel that all that time. Okay, that's good, so that's a sign. So this was yet another confirming test that the flexion intolerance category was probably what he was dealing with, as even a flexion torque triggers pain, yet his symptoms could be decreased with learning how to stabilize the spine and move about the hips. So remember this for later. Now, proper evaluation for the back does not end just at looking at the spine. We must also look at the joints that connect to the spine, like the hips. You can see with the Faber test, he had symmetrical external rotation and extension of both sides of the hips. But with internal rotation, you can see his right side was a little stiff compared to his other side. Now we enter the test and retest part of the day. I had him do 10 for 5 second holds on the assisted hip airplane, dropping the pelvis until he felt a good stretch in his stance leg lateral glute. We then retested, and as you can see, he was able to show much improved hip mobility. So at the end of the examination, we found his symptoms fit best within the flexion intolerance category with an associated hip mobility imbalance. This meant that the butt wink he was showing during his squat was likely creating a stress concentration of flexion movement under load at the lower lumbar joints that was triggering his pain. Now it's important to point out that butt wink itself is not going to create a disc herniation or traumatic injury like many will think instantaneously. But the movement of the spine under load is still the mechanism that can lead to issues like these down the road. The timeline to injury will be very different for each person based on anatomy, past injury history, and exposure to the movement and load. But in this case for Corbin, we found through precise testing that butt wink was his specific trigger for pain. And now that we knew his trigger and understood it, we could craft together a plan of what to do and what not to do in order to allow his symptom intensity to wind down. To work core stability on day one, I integrated the McGill Big 3 exercise regimen with the modified curl up, the side plank, and the bird dog, a combo of low load exercises that help improve stability, much like a guy wire system that attaches to a radio tower. Now because full depth squats triggered his pain, I modified his squat to a box, allowing him to still lift, but to do so with a load in depth that was pain free and within his current capacity. You see, his spine remains in that ideal neutral position, using the box only as a stopping point in his descent. To help him retrain his hip hinge and his ability to tolerate flexion torques while keeping a brace spine, I used the breath belt with a plate hinge exercise. 
Unlike your traditional stiff belt made for heavy lifting, the breath belt is a thin and flexible belt. Here's how it works. You can see a small ball is trapped underneath the belt. He was told to breathe into his stomach and expand into the lateral parts of the belt. And if doing this correctly, the diaphragmatic breath would push the balls away. And then he braced over the top and performed a hinge, pushing the plate backwards, not relaxing until he got all the way back up. This belt, therefore, did not act like a regular belt, but assisted him in creating a sensory-rich environment for him to learn how to properly breathe and brace when moving about the hips. And when doing this correctly, he felt nothing in his back and only his glutes and hamstrings working at the bottom of the hinge. A couple weeks later, we continued to increase load on the bar and decrease the height of the box, all while maintaining a neutral spine and pain-free motion, showing we were on the right track. Great work, Corbin.